Hello. Earlier today I made a video showing how to make an indefinitely sustainable fusion reactor in Feed the Beast version 1.1.1 Ultimate. Uh, this is an updated video showing the 1.1.2 uh, that has a different version of Greg Tech with the much more complicated reactor. There are several videos out there showing you how to create this reactor. Um, essentially is the fusion control computer, a ring of fusion coils, um, encased in advanced uh, machine casings with power injectors, material injectors, and the material extractors. Uh, so I'm not going to go deeply into all of that, um, as there are other videos out there that show how to do it. Uh, instead, we're going to focus on what it takes to get this going. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the helium-3 deuterium reaction. Uh, and this reaction runs in, I want to say, 128 ticks. Let's double check that. Uh, recipe mode done, and helium-3, show me. Um, which is significantly faster than in previous versions. In the previous version, it ran in 2048 ticks, and yeah, we're running in 128 ticks. So this vastly increases the amount of infrastructure required to uh, get this taken care of. So, again, you may have noticed on the reaction that it actually consumes power to do this um, and then creates helium plasma as an output product. So, uh, we are constantly drawing uh, 2048 EU per tick into our reactor here. Uh, yeah, right about that. And we're feeding it a constant supply of helium-3 cells and deuterium cells. Um, and we're feeding it one of each of those every 128 ticks, um, which is, you know, just a few seconds. There's 20 ticks in a second. So uh, to accomplish that, we need a massive array of machines. Um, so we're using applied energistics to move everything around for us, and then just banks of machines here. So uh, let's start off with the materials that you need to get this going. Uh, first, you need a stack of cells for every machine you have out here, um, as well as for all four of the material injectors on the fusion reactor. So, um, I'm, I don't have a count on that right now, but lots and lots of stacks of cells. Um, you're also going to need some end stone um, and some redstone dust. And in your applied energistic system, we need a few recipes in here. So, we need to be able to craft 24 redstone with 4 UU matter. We need to make an empty cell out of a compressed air cell. We need to make a scrap box out of nine scrap. And this fake recipe here, where we're telling it we're making a wooden shovel out of a tome of alkahest, and one end stone, and one redstone. And you may recognize that recipe. It's a Zeno's reliquary recipe. We're actually producing uh, 16 end stone with that. Um, so I have another video. It's the cyclical crafting edge case that explains what that's about. Uh, but just understand that that works. So we have a level emitter set to 320 end stone. Um, if it falls below that, then we start exporting our wooden shovel, which is really making end stone for us. Um, and that is set to um, always craft, and we're using dark cable to separate that when we need to. Uh, we have another level emitter, which is keeping our redstone at 384. Uh, which we're doing that with an always with an active on redstone, always craft redstone, and we are also reclaiming our um, compressed air cells. So if we have a compressed air cell, then craft an empty cell, always craft, and obviously that's using our compressed air cell recipe. So then we are taking our end stone and we are running it into a bank of uh, four rotary macerators. Um, each of these are set to export endstone into them if we have less than 320 endstone dust. That endstone dust is coming back here to a bank of 38 uh, industrial centrifuges, which are centrifuging the endstone dust. And you're going to get several byproducts. You're going to get um, helium-3, helium, a uh, small pile of tungsten dust, and quite a bit of sand. Uh, and this is such an extreme number of machines that I actually am just purging the sand out of my machine. I've got an incinerator sitting right there and I'm just dumping all of my sand into it. Uh, and you can do something with your, your tungsten uh, dust if you want to. I'm not doing anything with it at the moment. Uh, additionally, because we are producing the helium back there and helium is a byproduct of our reactor, uh, we've got a series of five industrial centrifuges here. 
which are capturing that helium and it's going to give us back our empty cells and turn it into helium-3. Uh, and then on the deuterium side we have a bank of six industrial electrolyzers which are converting still water into hydrogen cells and compressed air cells and again we're reclaiming the compressed air and then we are taking those hydrogen cells and we've got a bank of 24 industrial electrolyzers turning those into deuterium cells and so all of the numbers are slightly off um, what you need is actually um, you know a fraction of a number below what I have here um, if you would like to cut these off at certain levels I would strongly recommend you arrange them in banks like this and then put a piece of dark cable and a level emitter so you can say once we have a certain amount of helium-3 uh, just turn off the applied energistics this entire row here and then you can do the same thing with deuterium and hydrogen and you wouldn't really mess with this here um, we are leveling the only part we need to and we always want to reclaim our helium cells and turn them into helium-3 okay so we have all the materials that we need going into our fusion reactor our fusion reactor is spitting out our helium plasma uh, we are taking that by pushing empty cells into these matter extractors here uh, and it's just shifting them through filling them up and then we're pulling the helium plasma cells out they're coming into our applied energetic system and we're just running those into a liquid transposer I've got a uh, energy bridge sitting right under here we're using very t minute amount of power um, and we're just transposing those cells as they come in and pushing our helium plasma uh, into this quantum tank which obviously is not needed uh, in our current setup and that is going out to a tesseract which is coming over here and feeding these hel these plasma generators so we have 30 plasma generators on the line uh, each of those are making I want to say 2048 EU per tick and we can just double check one of those um, they should be making 2048 EU per tick why are you not making 2048 EU tick my little friend do you not have sufficient plasma? I don't understand what's going on with that little guy. Oh, you know what I bet it is? It's because I am not using all of the power and it has nowhere to go. Okay, well these do make 2048 EU per tick. Um, that's what they put out. We have an HV transformer in front of each of these, scaling it down to 4, 5, 12 packets per tick our reactor here requires 2048 EU per tick so that's going back into it which leaves us with 29 of these guys uh, pushing power out into our system so our core system here including our applied energistics right there is using about 1100 um, EU per tick and that is counting our bank of what do we have here uh, 2244 re single overclocked recyclers so just a little bit over 1100 and that brings us to what we're doing with all of our power so we have a bank of 44 recyclers here um, each of them have a single overclocker upgrade in them and each of them have a igneous extruder sitting on top of them producing cobblestone um, this seems sufficient to keep up with the seven uh, matter fabricators that you will need on your line to draw this power you actually need 7.11 so you can put an eighth one down here uh, and ensure that you're using all of the power available from your system uh, but I just have the seven here for right now um, okay and let's take a look and so we're feeding all of these plenty of scrap and we may even have a little bit of scrap back up in our system I, I didn't calculate that very well because it's kind of random chancy but uh, let's see how we're doing. Yeah, we, we can probably cut down a couple of those recyclers um, if you want to. They are they are producing a surplus, so um, definitely you can add an additional matter fabricator and uh, play with it, but you can probably take off, I would guess, somewhere between 5 and 10 of, of these recyclers that we have going on here. So how does this compare to the last version? In our last version, we were putting 32,000 EU per tick into our matter fabricators. In this version, 
we're putting about 57,000 EU per tick in there. And again, we've got a 0 0.11 of slop that we're not taking up. So we can get just a little bit higher than that. Um, so while wow, it's, it's great, um, but the thing to remember is that we are using the redstone much, much faster than we were in the previous version. Uh, in the previous version, we were using one out of every 24 cycles um, in order to use redstone. Uh, in this version, about 36% of our output is being used to make redstone dust. So we're making, um, with the seven matter fabricators over there, let's take a look. Um, so you can see how quick this is going up. Remember, it's doing this seven, seven at once. Um, we are making one UU matter every 19 seconds. Um, excuse me, no, we're making one UU matter every 14 seconds. We are using one redstone dust every six and a half seconds, it's 6.4 seconds. Um, so again, it takes four UU matter to create 24 redstone dust. So if you figure that out, about 36% of your power, again, going into creating redstone dust. Uh, which means that after, after you make just enough redstone dust to run the reactor, um, you have about one UU matter every 19 seconds, um, or about uh, 43,895 EU a tick, or some combination thereof. So. It is quite a bit of infrastructure to get it going, but once it is done, we are producing uh, more UU matter than we were before uh, in the previous version. Again, one every 19 seconds, um, or we have a massive amount of power, more than the previous version was even generating, uh, almost 44,000 EU per tick available um, after creating the redstone dust to run this. So um, again, water, hydrogen cells, deuterium cells, pump those in, endstone dust being created from redstone which is being made from UU matter which we're turning into helium-3 feeding into the top, uh, helium plasma comes out, runs back in here, makes the power that makes our UU matter, um, and scrap comes in and that's the full system there. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. I know this is a uh, fairly complicated setup, um, but I hope it is helpful to someone. Thank you and have a great day.